People every day walk out of their homes, out for a walk, they think, when danger crawls up from the gutter, grabs onto their legs, and they drag danger around for a while, and then walk straight like there was no imbalance of weight. Some manage, but others walk too fast or carelessly, too far from home, away from family and friends and what meant anything to them. Danger takes them down with great force and lays them out alone on the street, tries to coax them into the sewer with lifeless corporate refuse. And they're still good inside, maybe better, more understanding of human nature as dependency soaks their shirts. They're called users, but they're being used and know it. You're a user until you curse yourself and go back for more. Yet you continue on in less and less cut substance captivity and live by things many of us have long forgotten. Faith, struggle, barter, camaraderie. And the folks who don't lift a finger except to point at you passing the blame spit on these down and outs, asking for no more than a second or third chance. Darkness followed the sun and Will knocked on the door of the apartment for the girl with her hair bleached white behind it. Hey, what's up? she asked. Hey, Bella, you ready to cast? Oh, she said, surprised. I, I said someone in class would help me, remember? But I've got the wax, the cheesecloth, everything. I'd love to do it. You bought that for me? Wow, I can pay you back. It's fine, just let's do it. He spread the newspapers out on her kitchen floor while she melted the wax over the stove in a coffee tin. And he checked the layout of her apartment with her art on the walls. She was a third year undergrad at the Art Institute. She and her art school friends hung out at the Alcohol Abuse Center, a bar on Chicago Avenue. She took off her shirt and bra and stood nervous on the business section of the Tribune. He dipped the brush into the tin and began to cast her chest in wax, the heat making her nipples hard. Is it too hot? he asked in the trail of a lengthy ridden silence. And the first layer is hot, but then it's fine. Keep going. It's okay with you, right? He painted layer upon layer on her pale skin from shoulder to waist, ripping cheesecloth with his teeth to dress her breast and stem the growth of wax stalactites. After a half hour, Bella turned pale and began to tremble. Are you okay? You're whiter than your hair. I feel kind of sick. I'm not supposed to move, but I think I'm going to be ill. He looked down over the street from her living room while she was in the bathroom. The fumes from the wax must have affected her. The nearest streetlight below had been broken a week ago by kids in contests with stones. Glass puddles formed from broken car windows shimmered in the night. Standing in the same position for so long, Maybe that's what did it, he guessed. He saw an envelope on the windowsill addressed to her. Bella Virginia Vaughn. When he turned around, she was wrapped in a towel. I think I've had enough, she said. But the left side, the breast, it's much thicker than the right. Don't you want to even it out? I need you to leave, she said sharply. Okay. Sorry, I, I guess we'll have to settle for a Van Gogh instead of a Picasso. Don't be sorry. Just get out of here.